especially TV and the movies, will be used to spread propaganda and desensitization, using subliminals, magic, fear, and chemicals, the Illuminati will continue to interfere with free moral agency. Chemicals causing sickness, submissiveness, and infertility will be found in the food and water. Medications resulting in pliability will be forced on children. Cancer will be the new way to die. TV, clergy, movies, and schools will be the vectors by which highly advanced mind control techniques will be delivered. Vanity and fear will be subtly doled out on every show. You will see the global arbitrator or global government depicted as the solution. Evil men will be praised and placed into positions of power. The good will be silenced, murdered, and consistently demoted. The individual will grow estranged from their family and friends. The children will be distant from their parents and families will splinter. The distinction between the genders will fade as homosexuality becomes ordained and androgyny becomes fashionable. The Illuminati will continue to promote a gender war, constantly increasing the gap between the genders to the point where no marriage is safe and no relationship is sacred. Both genders will find themselves surrounded by images of beauty whose requirements few could fulfill, and this will further instill frustration. Loyalty will become pragmatism, faith will become practicality, and affection will be relegated to the symbiotic. In this future, the adults will act like children, while the children act like adults. Not even genetics is left a quiet front in this war because whole generations of crop plants will be ruined by genetic manipulation. There shall be a day when the trees bear no fruit and the skies bear no rain. Even people who are born with certain traits will be euthanized like weeds. The masses, growing ever more materialistic, will begin making superficial choices regarding their mating partners, which results in the altering of the very gene pool of the human race. Eventually, will come war in the Middle East and East Asia. The Middle East and the Far East will serve as the major theaters in the coming world war. This global conflict will likely be initiated as a smaller war between America and her allies and rogue states like North Korea and Iran. Israel herself may engage Iran while the South and North Koreas finally take to war. These smaller conflicts will soon draw in all the other world powers, namely China and Russia. Proposals involving the weaponization of space will be expensive, wasteful, and may further incite tensions between the superpowers. The Western nations will naturally side with America and, although I'm not sure of Russia's role, China's role will surely be adversarial to America in the coming world war. This world war will crush the human spirit and will play a major role in the masses' acceptance of global government. Even though the deliberately spoiled environment and the phony global warming crisis will continue to empower global government, in truth, only a devastating war could justify the dissolving of nations. This war is not likely to have a clear winner, but instead will exhaust all the parties involved, the superpowers in particular. Such is its purpose, in the midst of devastation and at the height of despair, the human race will finally submit to a single authority. Most things related in this chapter are compiled from numerous satanic and occultic sources, both obscure and well-known. You don't have to believe the things written here, simply believe that many in the occult believe them. A reoccurring theme in mythology and the occult is the concept of a god or goddess having multiple aspects. Similar to how your guardian angel, guardian demon, and spirit are three aspects of you 
One of those aspects is good and pure, another is dark and selfish, and your fleshly manifestation is another aspect of you that stands between the two. Yahweh. This is the Most High God, Jehovah, the God of Israel. He is also Zeus, Jupiter, Osiris, Jove, and Ahura Mazda. He is the Archon Emperor, the King of Heaven, and the Father of the Elohim. He is said to be the true father of the Archangels Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, and, before his fall, Titania. Satan, although in some accounts, is in fact Yahweh's brother. These sons of God were commonly equated with the children of Jehovah. Zeus is also said to have plenty of offspring. Modern day Satanists often remark that Satan successfully stole Yahweh's quote unquote creative power, and this belief has fueled much use of phallic symbolism. The planet is dotted with obelisks, like the Washington Monument which are merely phallic symbols which represent the creative principle that Satan now possesses. It is the fire Prometheus stole from the gods. The act of stealing Jehovah's creative principle, however, also resulted in the discontinuance of the birth of new angels, now a race whose numbers are forever in decline. It is also remarked that Jehovah transformed his children, the archangels, into new kinds of beings when they were young. God exists outside of creation, and when God desires to drop down into the lower realms, such as heavens or earth, he is often described as no longer all-knowing, but instead capable of being deceived. Jehovah is frequently depicted as an aging old man whose love for humans exceeds his love for the race he spawned, the angels. Osiris, too, is said to have reclaimed all his parts except his phallus. It was the Archangel Michael and his army who expelled Satan, his uncle or brother, from heaven. Satan and the other expelled angels were cast into the black void in the universe, now called hell. Before Satan's banishment, Jehovah allegedly assigned Satan as his favored son and second in command, with Archangel Michael as third in command. Michael is said to have gray colored hair, beard, and eyes. It is also alleged that Archangel Michael spoke to Satan before his fall, attempting to dissuade him from his ambition, which was to seize the throne of God himself. Archangel Gabriel is said to be the angel responsible for destroying the Nephilim race with a flood. Gabriel is thought to be the swiftest of the angels and used as a messenger who sits on the left side of God's throne. He is often associated with a metal cutting instrument which he uses as a weapon to strike down the enemies of God. Some have suggested that Gabriel at some point lost the favor of God, but was redeemed. It has also been remarked about Gabriel that it was he, at the behest of God, that confused the languages and divided man into his many current sub-races. Islam and the prophet Muhammad are said to have been guided by the teachings of Archangel Gabriel. It was the duty of Archangel Raphael to bind Azazel, or Lucifer, and cast him from the Garden of Eden and quote-unquote into darkness. Raphael's physical description is one of a handsome youth, arrayed in purple robes. It is said that Raphael is among the gentlest of the spirits, especially compared to the other archangels. Frequently equated with Osiris, Jesus Christ is often spoke of as a demon hunter and civilizer. With the story of Osiris predating the story of Jesus Christ by more than 